Madam Speaker, he is the biggest logger in our country. Biggest logger. He is the guy who finished our forest. And he has been made, um, he is a member of the board of Kenya Forest Service. Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Of course, when you hear pan paper, you know who the owner is. The CS for Interior, he came to the media and said that he had impounded sacks and sacks of sugar. We want action. These people are known. They should be arrested. I hear people talking about cartels, cartels, cartels. Interestingly, these cartels are made up of people, some of whom are even in this house. Yes. We, must, we must learn to call a spade a spade. Yes. There are members of this house. This sugar did not come through from the skies. It did not come out of earth. This sugar passed through entry points, Madam Speaker. It came through the port, either through other borders. I want to challenge, I want to challenge Kenya Revenue Authority. I want to challenge CS Rotich. I want to challenge uh, Kenya P uh, Port Authority. Let them discount the figures I have given. Let them discount. I challenge anybody outside the house, inside the house. And that was a very fiery leader of the majority today after Parliament adjourned its sittings to discuss um, the sugar uh, issue in the country. Joining me now is Kanini Kega, the chair of the Trade Committee, and Godfrey Sotsi, who's right next to me. He's a nominated uh, member of Parliament from the Sugar Belt. You're both welcome to the program. Uh, Godfrey, let me begin with you because you were the mover of the motion um, that led to the debate that we witnessed in your opinion, and uh, having come from the Sugar Belt, what exactly is going on? Well, uh, what is going on in the country in relation to sugar is a very serious, very serious matter of national concern. Because I come from the Western region where uh, most of the sugar is produced. And uh, we see a lot of poverty, we see a lot of desperation, we see a lot, of, a lot of lost hope because of the problems that we are experiencing as a country in the sugar industry. And as leaders from the region, we can no, lo we can no longer keep quiet as we see our economic situation worsening by the day. So I thought it was important for me as a member of parliament to bring up that motion uh, today to discuss the sugar situation, sugar industry situation in this country. And this is not the first time that parliament has been discussing this issue of uh, crisis in the sugar industry. Mm -hmm. It has been there. Mm -hmm. We have had numerous reports that have been uh, given by parliament, mm -hmm. but there has been very minimal action on uh, recommendations by parliament and i'm happy yeah. today the level of interest in parliament today was overwhelming to, yeah and you, we've heard from the leader of the majority and uh, i mean uh, listen to him in parliament he seemed to have a lot um, of information regarding where sugar is currently being held who is behind uh, this importation the fact that this is a protected person what do you know of it well, uh, w uh, what I can say about uh, the leader of majority and uh, a lot of other members of parliament from the government side, I can only say it was very interesting listening to them. Uh -huh. They were very clear, they were very firm, and uh, all I can ask them, uh, which the majority leader, Honorable Aden Duale, promised, uh -huh. that he's going to share the information he has with the uh, relevant committees of parliament which are going to investigate this matter. That is the Committee of Trade and the Committee of Agriculture. Yeah, and we're expecting so those revelations uh, tomorrow. We look forward to those names. revelations coming up mm -hmm. before those committees. And I hope that the level of interest in parliament today mm. is going to translate into real action because a farmer, a farmer, Sugar cane farmer in this country is a slave. Sugar cane farmers are suffering. Mm -hmm. They have no money for food. They have no money for school fees. And the level of poverty is rising by the day. Okay, Kanini, you, you are, in, of course, uh, chairing this trade committee. And um, 
what is difficult to understand is how can the market be flooded not just with cheap sugar but where still sugar which the government claims is contaminated how is that possible and thank you and i would like to thank my colleague uh, honorable Sotsi, who brought uh, this adjournment, mo uh, adjournment motion on the floor of the house and then also honorable naisura also brought a uh, request uh, for statement mm -hmm. uh, that was directed to our committee to investigate this issue about sugar let's uh, look back where do we how, how do we find ourselves in this kind of a situation and um, it was after the directive by his excellency the president through the moot agency team that was set up to look into the illicit trade that we have in the country it is estimated that about 40 percent of all the traded goods in the country are counterfeit or they are illicit and worse off is that uh, malaria drugs, we got uh, that information which was, which was actually very shocking that mm -hmm. about 90% uh, of all the malaria drugs in the country are counterfeit mm -hmm. or illicit. Very, uh, a very serious concern. The other day we saw the, the, the Minister for Internal Security saying that uh, the sugar that was impounded mm -hmm. in the various stores had mercury and uh, copper, copper and a very serious allegation. In fact, uh, we are looking forward to meeting with him to actually shed more light because um, they, they are, I, th I think there are two bodies in Kenya which can actually ascertain that. That is Kenya Bureau of Standards and the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. Kenya Bureau of Standards, which is under us, mm -hmm. we do oversight them. They have confirmed to us that they didn't do the tests. Mm -hmm. So we want to know exactly why, uh, where the, uh, the minister got uh, that kind of uh, report. The Kenya Bureau of Standards is on the record with you saying that they did not confirm to the internal security minister that this sugar is contaminated. Absolutely, and I can confirm that because they are under us. We oversight them, and mm -hmm. they have confirmed to us that they have not. They didn't do that test. Actually, they are they are in the process of uh, doing the results. So has the ministry told you where these results came from? We are inviting them. Uh, in the course of uh, the week, we'll be inviting them. Uh, we are actually even in Parliament because it cuts across the different uh, departmental committees. We are combining trade, industry, and then we are also combining agriculture and also uh, interior mm -hmm. to make sure that we have uh, one united team that you will be able to interrogate this issue. Do you but have reason to believe that these tests did not happen? I or to not trust what the interior security minister has said? Until, until the minister also tells us uh, where he got the results from, mm -hmm. because the, it's not from Kenya Bureau of Standards, mm -hmm. I don't know whether, maybe they did with the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, which of course is also mandated. But f so far, it is not from the Kenya Bureau of Standards. Secondly, mm -hmm. where do, why do we find ourselves in this situation, mm -hmm. in that we are importing sugar? Ordinarily, we should not import sugar because we have the, the sugar belt mm -hmm. whereby we, we grow sugar cane and we process that sugar. But progressively, all the companies in Western Kenya have closed down. I don't know whether there is any that is operating because I hear that the Mumias, which was somehow surviving, closed about three months ago. They are no longer operating. They are no longer processing sugar. This even no after the, the recent uh, injections Injection by of the, your, your Jubilee administration to revive the sector. That's the sad reality. They are no longer processing sugar. But if you look at um, the activities that have been happening in Western Kenya, there is this issue of uh, poaching, whereby a company comes and sets up. They don't have the raw material, but they go and uh, poach uh, sugarcane or the raw material from other companies. Secondly, the same, same companies that uh, were set up, which I think were uh, private companies, mm -hmm. they also had the leeway of importing sugar because they also have licenses to import sugar. License to import sugar is given by the Minister of Agriculture, which of course we still don't understand why the Minister of Agriculture through AFA should uh, license uh, companies to import sugar. Then the second issue is that uh, it is the, the Treasury also exempts these companies from uh, paying duty at particular period uh, or, or a particular season mm -hmm. when there is no enough sugar. So these kind of activities which have, uh, have been happening over a period of uh, uh, time, 
the local companies do not have the capacity to provide the sugar that we need in this country. So there was need to import sugar from <coughs> outside. And we have over 100 companies that are licensed to import sugar, both uh, industrial sugar and for human consumption. Mm. At the point of entry, at the point that you bring that sugar into the country, that's the time you declare whether that sugar is for human consumption mm -hmm. or for industrial purpose. Uh -huh. But what you have come to find mm. is that there are companies that import industrial sugar, but when now they bring that sugar in the country, mm. they now change it from industrial sugar to sugar for human consumption. But when that sugar was coming through the border, it was cleared because it was for industrial purpose. Okay. So those are the questions that we will be asking. Actually, we have uh, and so someone... And that seems to say that, at least as far as you are concerned, then there, there is no issue then with the authorities at the port point of entry, that this sugar does enter the country legitimately, well packaged, etc.? Not exactly. Not exactly. In fact, we want to get the actual tonnage of the industrial sugar that comes to the uh, to this country vis-a-vis -vis the requirements mm -hmm. and also the uh, sugar that comes to the country mm -hmm. through AFA because AFA is the one that advises the government on the need basis how much sugar we need in the country based on the assessment that they have done okay well, so let's see we uh, did MPs from uh, sugar growing um, areas know about the presence of this uh, contraband sugar well the presence of contraband sugar or uh, what I would call illicit sugar mm. or uh, toxic sugar mm. has been there for some time. Why hasn't this you, issue you been raised earlier? That, uh, even uh, around uh, 2016 there, there was an issue of uh, government entering <coughs> into Excuse a me. treaty with uh, Uganda mm -hmm. to import sugar from Uganda. Mm -hmm. And the leadership of the region, we raised concern about importing sugar from Uganda. Because the concept around importing sugar is the local industries could not produce enough sugar for local consumption. So the shortfall was to be imported. But, but this, we ended this up sugar that we're talking about right now, this one that Matiangi and co. have been um, impounding, etc., were... were leaders from the region aware of it and, and why um, are you raising your voice now after the fact? We are not aware of it. In fact, we are waiting for Mutiangi to shed more light, as my colleague uh, Honorable Kanini has said, mm -hmm. that we are waiting for Mutiangi to give us more information about this sugar that he impounded. Mm -hmm. Because he says that this sugar was uh, mixed with mercury. You know mercury to be a very, exp a very expensive mineral. And uh, it beats logic that sugar can be mixed with mercury. What would one be, uh, be seeking to achieve by mixing mercury with sugar? Number two, there is no clear uh, report from the government, either from the government chemist or any established government unit, that there were tests that were done on that sugar. So we want answers from Matiangi. Why do you think secondly, the, hold on, that's a secondly, very important point. I don't want us to lose it. Why, because he's also raised it, why do you think then that the internal security minister would go on national television and tell Kenyans that this is unsafe sugar if you again then say there have been no tests done? What would motivate him to say such a the, thing? The CS for internal security is in charge of immigration. He has his officers at the border points. They know what is coming in and what is going out. He knows if there is any culprits involved in this uh, trade of uh, illicit importation of sugars. He, know, he knows who these people are. All he can do for this country is to arrest these people and say, so-and-so brought in this amount of sugar. We have put him behind the bus. It is, it is ridiculous for a CS for internal security to parade sacks and sacks of uh, illicit sugar and say this is the illicit sugar that I, may, I have impounded. The question is who are the owners of that sugar? Why haven't they been arrested? And you yourself said in parliament today that uh, the barons are along Harambe uh, Avenue. Who did you mean by that? 
Harambe Avenue is wide. It goes all the way to Parliament. And we know that uh, you cannot be powerful as a government. And powerful offices of government are located on Harambe Avenue. So if the government cannot be able to arrest these people, who will arrest them? So we are saying these people are powerful. They have been there. They are known by the government, people in power. They should be arrested instead of them coming to us to tell us that people are importing sugar. Today in parliament, uh -huh. the leader of majority who is in government uh -huh. uh, uh, mentioned some important uh, names as far as the importation of sugar is concerned. Uh -huh. And we have said that he should present those names before the relevant committees. But One committee of trade that uh, Honorable Kanini chairs to provide more information on who are these importers of sugar. But there's one thing I don't want to, to leave behind, uh, gentlemen, and it's not flogging the horse, but we have heard Kenyans saying, you know, they are not taking sugar. We have people write into us, text us, and say, they, 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 you know, their parents have literally poured out all the sugar in the house. People are genuinely afraid that they could be consuming poison in their house. And two legislators are sitting before me today and saying that both of you have no idea how government arrived at this conclusion it sounds like you're doubting that that is true are you are you telling kenyans that until, is lying until we are now saying that he's lying but until he provides uh, documentary evidence saying that uh, these tests were done on these uh, products and these are the results i've confirmed to you and i told you that the committee that i do oversight that is uh, kenya bureau of standards they didn't uh, perform those tests so but, but I'm also saying that uh, it could have been done by other agencies, uh, uh, pharmacy and poisons board, which I, I think they, 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 are also, they can also do the test. And as I told you, as a committee, this is an issue that has been brought to our attention. Mm -hmm. We have already written letters to the Minister of Interior. We have written to KRA. Mm -hmm. We have written to KEBS. They are coming before us. We, also written, we have also written to Treasury to come also before us and i think by that time we'll uh, provide more information as we get it but at the moment that is uh, the information that even myself i want also to confirm that I'm, not sugar? Also, I'm not also, i'm not taking sugar also but uh, it is out, out of personal Aren't choice you? I am taking sugar. It's out of my personal choice, and it's not the first time that I'm not taking sugar. sugar. Okay. It's, a, it's a personal decision that I had made. However, we also want to distinguish the two, between two issues, about the illicit or uh, the contaminated sugar and also the contraband sugar. Mm -hmm. That there are people who are importing sugar mm -hmm. that is not allowed. Maybe they are also evading duty. Mm -hmm. And the reason that most of the companies the sugar companies in Western, in, in Western Kenya have also collapsed because it is a well uh, orchestrated uh, scheme that was done to make sure that the, the companies in Western Kenya are killed. Just the, the, same, the same cartels are the same cartels who have been operating in uh, the coffee industry, the tea industry, and collapsing what uh, the Kenyan farmers have been doing. The same people even in the cotton industry, we have killed our factories. I chair trade industry and cooperatives. Mm -hmm. But instead of our, us having more companies in Kenya, we are killing our companies and importing those products from other countries. We are not taking our country uh, ahead. We are putting it backwards. So those are some of the issues that definitely we also be putting forward. Do you have um, a handle on how much sugar we are talking about? How much do you believe is contraband sugar? Is, is there a figure that you have? No, we don't have a figure. Uh, the question came to us today, mm -hmm. and I, I believe by Thursday, we should, because on Thursday we have uh, Kenya Bureau of Standards uh, coming before us. Mm -hmm. Then on Friday, we have all the other agencies coming to us so that they can give us the documentary evidence. How many companies have been licensed? Actually, what we are asked is that for the last one year, how many companies have been licensed? to import sugar in this country. Mm -hmm. And how many tonnage mm -hmm. has been imported in the country? And I think by Friday, we should have all that information because it is, it is uh, with the Treasury, definitely the tre Treasury has. Immigration also they have because it passes through our borders. The leader of the majority, um, as part of his claim, said, you know, that um, this is the 
the small fish are being protected by government and he's the leader of the majority. Um, there are those who believe that uh, this war has become political, uh, but as much was actually said on the floor of the House today. Do you believe that that is true, that there's more than meets the eye in this sugar war? Mm. Let's start with you. You're a member of the Jubilee Party. Uh, they are good uh, business people who are doing honest business. And we cannot bundle them together with those people who are doing illicit trade. And we can only be able to distinguish that once we get that evidence from the relevant authorities. But do you, believe it's do you think there's some politics being played here? I don't want to say that there is politics because I don't want to commit myself in something that I don't have documentary evidence. But I know once we interrogate these institutions, we will be able to sift through the truths and the lies that could be here. But also understand that when you are fighting with this corruption, it's not about sugar only. The multi-agency is, on, on, is not only dealing with sugar. Sugar is just one component. It is about a big spectacle, spectra of all so many things that have been important in this country which are contraband. Well, sugar like, is yeah. just one. Is there politics in well, this, do you well, think? Well, 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 as I Small said, fish are being targeted and government knows who, well who well, the big fish are. Well, as I said earlier, mm. the angle that was brought in by Honorable Dwale was very interesting because Dwale was very clear. He even talked about the tonnages in various go-downs mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. of sugar, illicit sugar. And he even said that he is ready to table the names before the relevant committees. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very productive. Let us allow him to table the names before the committees. And the report will come to parliament. The companies which are implicated, we will deal with them as parliament. But what I want to say is uh, that uh, the illicit importers of sugar, their days are numbered. Do you think this is uh, a kind of uh, commercial war on who controls the industry? For now, I can't say yes or no. But all I can say is that let Duale and the rest of the people who have evidence mm -hmm. present that evidence before the committees. The committees are going to evaluate the evidence mm -hmm. and make a determination the way forward. But based on the earlier reports mm -hmm. of Parliament, because in 2016, the Departmental Committee on Agriculture presented a report before Parliament on sugar industry crisis. Because this is a new, it's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. And very serious recommendations were made. Recommendation on establishment of an interagency to deal with the issues of importation of sugar. Recommendations on repackaging of sugar. Recommendations on uh, delisting some of the importers of sugar recommendations on uh, mumia's sugar, mm. those resolutions of parliament have not been implemented by the relevant agencies. For example... And why do you think that is? Because there is no political goodwill. And that's why we are saying today sounded like a great day for this country. Because sitting there, listening to even people in government saying this is wrong, these are the people importing sugar. Mm. It was very productive. We are looking forward to them presenting that information or evidence before the relevant committees so that we can dis de de decide the way forward for this country. But as a leader from the region mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, having a lot of challenges around these issues of sugar, I would say today was a very productive day and we are looking forward to government, people in government, taking action against these uh, importers of illicit You sugar know, you've mentioned the, the report, and I remember the debate at the height of the crisis was that, especially, you know, after Kenya uh, asked for several, you know, um, extensions when it came just before, you know, the markets were opened through the Comesa Pact, um, that basically we had been unable to make our sugar competitive, and that that is the problem. And subsequent um, interventions by government, including uh, incentives for farmers, etc., have simply not worked, which Kanini has uh, admitted to, that even this administration's um, efforts in that respect have not worked. If that be the case, I, I mean, I, I wonder whether you consider 
you you agree or disagree that there there even exists a sugar industry still in Kenya and is it in the best interest of the farmer to move to other productive crops I said it very precise precisely in parliament today I said that the problems and the solutions to the problems in the country start and end with the cartels the cartels in the sugar industry are part and parcel of the larger problem of the sugar industry and the solution. And the government knows. If it is an issue of competitiveness of our sugar, why is our sugar not competitive? It is not competitive because of high cost of production. Why is the high cost of production there? It's because of the high taxes, high cost of fertilizer, high cost of other inputs. These are issues that the government knows. Why is the government unable to deal with this problem? As we are speaking now, the sugar regulations have not been gazetted more than a year since they were formulated. Who is supposed to answer for this? The Attorney General and the CS in charge of agriculture. Why have they, they gazetted the sugar regulations which were agreed with the stakeholders? And I agree, I agree with what you've said. Now there are things that needs to be done. It's yeah. because the cartels are stopping all this from being done. But let me, let me rephrase it this way because I don't think anything that you've said is in doubt. But w the reality is that we have been you know, going round in circles on this sugar issue for what? More than a, a decade now? Yes. Have that being the case as an area leader, do you, do you still tell Kenyan your farmers in your area to go out and grow sugar hopefully sugar cane hopefully something will happen or is it time for the leadership to also you know look at what's at the table and say what are the other options for our farmers who you've said are in poverty you know farmers have been very op op optimistic but they are losing faith in the industry and that's why you find that farmers in mumia's sugar belt have uprooted sugar and they're planting maize but if you walk a few kilometers away in Lugari and Kitale, mm, mm. you find that farmers are uprooting maize mm. and they are planting sugar. sugar. Okay. A wow. contradiction. Mm. This is a clear, clear vicious circle of po poverty in our region. And that's why we are saying as leaders from the region, we cannot continue watching as the economy of our region is being manipulated by a few Can any individuals, yes, yes, cartels, I'm. interfering with our economy. Fair enough. I'll allow your rejoinder, but, you know, uh, as the chair of the trade committee and, uh, you know, because some have, you know, brought in the word politics uh, into this situation, you know, there are traders who are in panic that their sugar could be labeled contraband or, or, or illegal or something of the sort. I mean, what are the parameters? How do you determine that this is contraband sugar? Uh, how is that determined? Well, not by you, but and how is not it determined? Exactly, and that is uh -huh. the reason we are inviting these institutions mm -hmm. to come and tell us mm -hmm. uh, what is the difference, mm -hmm. you know, uh, between the, the genuine sugar, because there is genuine sugar in this country, and we have to say it as a fact. I was also shocked on the floor of the House mm -hmm. when uh, Honorable Ashari, who is a, a majority whip, said that uh, <coughs> if you find any mumia sugar uh, packaged anywhere, then it is contraband. And I was, uh, we were like, maybe there could have been some stock that was kept, you know, after the company closed, or there, some, there could have been some traders who are still uh, having uh, some stock of that, uh, that sugar. I want, we, don't, we want to demystify this issue that everything, all the sugar that we have in this country is either contraband or illicit, which is, that, is not the case. As I said, there are some very, very genuine um, traders and business people who have imported sugar genuinely and they have packaged it uh, genuinely and they are trading it in a genuine way they have even paid taxes and that is the reason we are seeking the indulgence of Kenyans as we uh, engage the, the various agencies which I think by Friday by, by Friday at least we have uh, gotten all this information but it is absolutely to from where I sit mm. there is absolutely no need for panic like what uh, the CS said, that the sugar that we have has mercury and uh, copper. I don't think there is any institution that has been able to ascertain that. 
having said that also, it's also important that we also note that these cartels, because you have to confirm that there are cartels, mm. and not just in sugar business. There are cartels in sugar, there are cartels in coffee, there are cartels in rice. We, are also, we have heard that there could be plastic rice in the country. You know, we are importing a lot of rice from uh, God knows where. These are some of the issues that we are also, we are not just uh, the, the dealing with the sugar alone. Because as a chairman of trade, mm. we also have to protect the genuine business people who are doing honest business, who are not supposed to be lumped together with the wrongdoers. We need to isolate the wrongdoers and punish them. But we cannot also punish those people who are doing also genuine business. So, but it for, from the consumer's perspective... Today, as the, chair, the parliamentary committee chair on trade, can you tell Kenyans confidently, go to your local supermarket and buy that sugar and use it? It's a difficult question because, as I said, we are inviting the ministry and the relevant institutions to come before us. Let me rephrase. Would you tell Kenyans, don't buy your next packet of sugar until we're done with this probe? Not so. Not so. Because that one will create panic and um, genuine people who are doing uh, a lot of good business for this country. But you tell them to pray losses. before they have their next Can cup I say of this? tea. Uh, yes. But also, <laughs> okay. we, are, we, we are also uh, asking the Mood Agency team. We have seen them uh, invading the small uh, wholesalers. I even saw one written canini something which of course I need to, to say that <laughs> there has true. absolutely <laughs> no relationship <laughs> with me. <laughs> but we also want to see mm -hmm. those big boys, the importers, because the people now they are dealing with are not the importers. They are dealing with the distributors. They are dealing with the, uh, the wholesalers. We want to see the importers. However, we also don't want the whole thing now to, for us to lose the whole war when now we now loop in people who are also doing genuine business. And I would at, want to see... at this point, your committee is not aware of who the importers are? Absolutely not. Actually, the leader of majority said that he is going to give us a, uh, that, uh, that list tomorrow. We are looking forward to that list so that we can be able to interrogate it. Because we have to also counter-check that list with the relevant uh, ministries. As we speak right now, your committee is not aware who these so-called barons are. And Duale says one can Google. Absolutely no. Absolutely no. Yeah. So this information is just with Adam Duale? You know, until in Parliament, until you table the document, it is purely hearsay. Until he brings that document saying that this is a company, these are the companies that are involved in this uh, trade, he has also challenged the ministry, I, I think interior, to go and invade uh, particular stores, I think in uh, Nakuru, in Mombasa, and whatever, which I think is in the discretion of the ministries to do exactly that. I think they are obliged to do also do that. No, I, but, but I'm just asking, and I, I am obviously not asking you to speak on his behalf, but he is the, your leader of majority um, and seems to have this wealth of information on... I think, know, I the, think he was talking sugar, as the, the what, MP. What, what, I think the, uh, today he was talking as the MP for Garissa Township. Because even in Parliament, even if you hold that particular position, you also talk as a member of Parliament representing the people who elected you. Until he uh, utters you that You don't think document. it's curious that he all of a sudden has all this information on it and it's coming up now in Parliament. I even, I'm even shocked because when you have that kind of evidence of information, then you should also take it to the relevant uh, government bodies. Like, for example, no. the DCI should also have taken it to Interior, who are also doing the, the, the rounds that they are doing, whereby they are, they are invading the various stores. I think they should, uh, you should also have done that before. Uh, let me submit us this, that uh, there is logic in importing sugar because our total ca consumption mm -hmm. far much uh, out uh, weighs our production mm -hmm. and therefore the excess has to be imported but now this window of opportunity has been misused mm -hmm. by unscrupulous businessmen supported by those in power in government at the sugar directorate at uh, KRA and many other places mm -hmm. to bring in illicit sugar. This is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. And the government knows this. 
government cannot be naive to this issue of importation of sugar because this sugar comes through the port of Mombasa, K uh, port of Mombasa. Port of Mombasa, we have KPA. This sugar has to be inspected by very various government agencies. We have the anti-counterfeit authority that has to deal with issues of counterfeit and such, illicit sugar and uh, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We have the Kenya Bureau of Standards. We have the KRA and many other organizations. Why is this sugar finally ending up into a market? It is because there is corruption. There are cartels in this inter industry who are ensuring that illicit sugar gets into our market. And now the sugar which is in our market is more than the sugar that is expected to be imported and even the sugar that is supposed to be produced in this country. So, in fact, as leaders from the region, we are saying the government needs to be very clear that they need to tell people of Western Kenya and the Nyanza region mm -hmm. that we do not need these factories. We all need to import sugar and package it. We okay. don't need Mumia Sugar Company. Mm -hmm. We don't need Nzoya Sugar Company mm -hmm. so that our farmers can do other things. They can but on. they cannot continue cheating our people that continue farming sugar, continue producing sugar, and then they go ahead and license people to import sugar into the country Hold up. and let's, package it. Let's uh, see what uh, you've been sending in and thank you so much for your comments tonight. Definitely, it all starts when our politicians fight against themselves instead of uh, fighting corruption. And the question we were asking you is whether politics um, is interfering with the fight against corruption. And uh, that is what you're responding to. Yes, political leaders must stop looking for political mileage from scandals. Instead, provide solutions. The masterminds of all these scandals are politicians. It's unfortunate that we are being led by selfish leaders who are not ready to serve Wananchi. It's shameful. We will not win this war on corruption with the present politicians around. Um, no, so the question again is uh, whether politics is uh, hampering the fight against corruption. No, unless we allow it, we have laws, Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, Public Officers Integrity Act, ETC. And this is what you're sending to us on 22422. Yes, the one big hindrance, immunity offered to those politically connected. Politics is the main hindrance to everything. They are the same people who are corrupt and the cartels in disguise. Our leaders should not put politics into what will destroy the life of Kenyans. If you are corrupt, face the law. Finally, all the acts of corruption in this country are in line with politics. Gentlemen, your final comments. And I would want to seek the indulgence of Kenyans. Uh, we have seized uh, that, uh, this matter and um, we have asked for one week. We will be able to engage with all the stakeholders. We will be able to engage with all the, the players. And uh, at the end of uh, next week, actually it's by, th by Thursday, we should have a report that we will give to Kenyans to tell them whether the sugar that we have in the country is safe or not, because we have engaged all the relevant uh, organizations, CABS, they are coming before us, KRA, they are coming before us, Treasury, they are coming before us. We also be able to uh, also lay bare the list of importers mm. and how much sugar they have imported in this country, whether it's industrial sugar or uh, for human consumption. Mm -hmm. And they have also to justify where they were taking that sugar. If they were in, uh, importing that sugar for industrial use, they have to take us where they actually use that sugar. So I think within w uh, one week, mm -hmm. we seek the indulgence. As a committee, we will do everything possible to make sure that uh, we give a very, very clean and clear report moving forward. Because we cannot allow counterfeit uh, goods to be imported in this country. It has been happening. About 40%, as they say, 
of the goods that we have in the country are contraband. And it's projected that if we continue with the uh, current trade, by 2020, it will be 60% of contraband uh, mm. goods in the country. We have to stop it. And we are supporting the president because he's the one who uh, started all this uh, fight against contraband goods. Yeah. So we are supporting him and we want to assure Kenyans that by the end of next week, we will have a report, okay. that a credible report that will bear facts from lies also. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, mine I can say one is um, every Kenya enjoys sugar. You enjoy sugar, enjoy sugar. No, 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 me I don't enjoy, enjoy sugar. sugar. Don't. You don't enjoy <laughs> sugar. And uh, that is great for this country. Mm -hmm. But the people, the people who suffer a lot when the, the sugar industry collapses mm. in the farmers. Mm. Majority of these farmers are in Western Kenya. Mm. That is w the former Western province mm. and the Nyanza region. Mm -hmm. And the level of poverty in that region has been rising by the day. Mm -hmm. Many of these farmers are unable to pay school fees for their children. They are unable to even buy food for their families mm -hmm. because the sugar industry has collapsed. Mm. And we are saying the companies which are in the region, Mumia Sugar Company, Nzoye Sugar Company, Cabras, mm -hmm. uh, West Kenya, mm -hmm. they all are important in our economy for the region. In fact, on average, they pump about 100 million, over 100 million shillings mm -hmm. a week mm -hmm. into the economy of Western region. Mm -hmm. So we support that. But we want them to operate by the rules. And the government is there to ensure that uh, there is a regulated import of sugar into this country mm. so that we are able to protect our industries. Mm. And if there is need to import sugar, let that importation be done by the sugar factories to meet the shortfall within the rules. Let there not be other individuals who do not own a sugar mill, Mm. who do not have any uh, sugarcane plantation they own, they all wait there to wait for any opportunity to import illicit sugar into the market. And if any sugar has to be imported, let it be unprocessed sugar, which is finally processed by these sugar factories to go into the market. Because when we start hearing things like there is sugar last with mercury, and that is dangerous for this economy. In fact, any individual who is found mm. to have imported sugar last with chemicals mm. or minerals, mm. that is an individual who is a murderer and is an individual who should be taken to international criminal court for a case of uh, murder of humanity. Because so many people can die if yeah. really sugar has, uh, has mercury. Mm -hmm. So many Kenyans will get, no wonder many no, no. of our people are getting cancer all over no. and dying. But it is true, it's true that, that I mean, it's a, a gravely serious issue. Uh, Honorable Ken Kega will be waiting on that report a week from today. I thank you both for coming to the program and for your views. And of course, you for watching tonight. I'm Anki Guta. Good night. God bless. Thank you.